Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now in this one, I'll be giving you a crash course on Sandstorm Temple. Now I'll be going through this previously recorded video twice. The first time, I'll be only talking about mechanics, and the second one, I'll talk about their normal attack patterns. So, first of all, the first boss. His mechanic starts when his health reaches 80%. And right after he finishes his normal attack, he will jump to the middle and then release a shockwave. Now, this looks like a glitch to me, but that wave came way after his jump. I personally think it's supposed to come right as he lands, but to me right now, it seems like the wave comes at random times. So, as you are looking uh, at this, he does this AoE eight times at different locations, and then he will shoot a lightning buff at the furthest person. So, the easiest way to do this is having everyone stand in one spot. So, I have this mark on my head and I just had everyone stand on me. The lightning buff can be shared with up to three people. If you do not share with three people, the person that gets two stacks will die. But, if you have four people, only three of them will get the buff, so you will not have four people that have the buff, even if you have four people standing together. What happens if you don't get the buff? If you don't have the buff, you will get frozen in time. It's basically like soul set, but you can't do anything in there. And you want to stay on the outside of soul set so you can knock down the boss and bring your teammates out, or else the hits later will really hurt. You will see it in a bit. So, right after the lightning sharing, you want to stun the boss. And then he will do that attack, and one more after. The second one will stun, so you can resist it if you want to. And then he will do these harmless slams. And that right there is one set of slams. So one, one, two, and then three, whole screen. That's one set. So if you look at his head, you will see an hourglass. When this hourglass disappears is when you want to knock him down. So even if his CC bar is open, it doesn't mean you want to knock him down right away. So, as you can see here, that's the second set of slams and the hourglass went away. Now is one you want to knock down. And that will bring all of your teammates out of, I'm just going to call it soul set. And that's the third set. You'll do three sets of slams and then a ball slam. And there's the ball slam. So, if you fail the mechanics and you have no one to knock down on the outside, this is the one you want to iframe for your team if you are the one on the outside. If you don't iframe this for your team, everyone will take about 120k damage, so it is more than likely that it will kill everyone. And since they're in soul step, they can iframe this hit themselves, but after this hit, it will take them out anyway, and then they can iframe the rest themselves. But as you can see here, since we did the mechanics correctly, no one is taking any damage at all, so you can just ignore those slams completely. After that, since we had enough DPS, he actually phased and he's just doing the same thing again. Jump, wave, stand pillars eight times, and then lightning buff, CC him again, rinse and repeat. But if you don't have enough DPS, he will do these really annoying persistent AoEs on the ground. He will do it twice, but it's just annoying for the most part. All you have to do is walk out of the way and not stand in them. There you go, lightning buff, stand together. You can look on the minimap that everyone is standing on me. This is by far the easiest way. That one will stun. Resist it if you want to, but it's just a really short stun, so that doesn't really matter. Now that's the first boss done. Let's jump to the second boss. The second boss mechanic also technically starts at 80%, but he actually does a set of attacks before. Like right here. He actually does three slams before his actual max be mechs begin. But when you see these slams and the message pop up, if you are doing mechs, you want to go away. Go far away from the boss. What you have to do on this boss is have two people farm mark. Now it doesn't, it doesn't matter at all who these farm mark are, but they just have to know what they're doing if they get the mark. Right there, when it says he's searching for a target to judge, he is marking two of the furthest people. If you get marked, you will have an eyeball on your head. Don't look at your buff bar, just look above your head, you will get an eyeball. 
And that thing you just saw right there, he is pulling one single for this person, and then you have to stun him. If you don't stun him, it's a party wipe. The mechanical one shot, so you can't die frame it. And after that, he will do the sand pillars similar to the first boss. And right here, this is the fifth pattern he will do, and it will always be the fifth. Um, I believe he has a set pattern, but this pattern is the only one that will hit the dead center. So if you're melee, you can just stand inside the boss and then iframe the fifth pillars he does. And this is the only one that will be in the dead center. All of the rest will just be on the outside. And that's the ninth and tenth. Right after the tenth, you'll see a message pop up saying he unleashes his wrath. Right when you see this message is uh, when you want to step in the circle that lights up. The circle is off screen, but it's basically one of these big circles right here. It will light up, so you use, want to step in those if you have a mark on your head. Don't go into the same one. Uh, both marks need to be in the circle. As soon as you see this message, if you go a, even a tiny bit late, it's a wipe. So, after you walk in, you will see two balls be shot at the boss. Right there, a black and a red. And then that will prevent the, the party wipe. And that's basically all the mechanics done. From here on out, uh, it's not really mechanics. Nothing will mechanically wipe your party, but I'll go through it anyway. So as you can see here, when he says, um, when you see this message, it will be a Naryu Sanctum like death zone. The outside is the death zone, so you can stay in the middle. And right there, when the thing on his head lights up red, he will shoot a pillar that will release the AoE that you just saw. Although that AoE can bug out and not go all the way, but here's one that does. That's the AoE that you want to jump over. Now, if it lights up black, he will shoot a bigger AoE than the pillar. And if you overlap that AoE with the pillar, it will do like 120k to your whole team. So make sure you do not go near a pillar if you have this black AoE on you right there. If you have that on you, do not go near one of these pillars. You'll wipe your whole party, more than likely. It's not a mechanical one-shot, but don't do it. So those are the pillars. You want to jump over the pillar, or else you will get one of these punishment stacks. And if you get hit by one of his red AoEs after, while having a punishment stack, it will more than likely one-shot you. So, oh, I skipped something. Hold on. So, as you can see here, he will do a slam, and everything that gets hit by his circle, so all the pillars, will do another circle. So, as you can see here, the best thing you can do is just spam jump and hope for the best. And that's pretty much it for this boss. From here on out, it's just rinse and repeat. But if you don't have enough DPS and you need a second mech phase, it will actually look, it will just look a bit different. As you can see here. Uh, four of these big circles will light up, but you only have to send in two of them. You do not need four markers, you still only need two people. It really doesn't matter which one you go in, just go into two of them. So, that's about it. Don't panic if you see four, it's completely normal. Now let's talk about their normal attack patterns. The first boss, if you are not tanking, then all you will get hit by is his backwards punch. And his jump. Pretty sure that's it. As you can see here, these are daze punches. They will daze if you get hit, and then he will do a red AoE. Oh, and this one, I'm sorry. This one will knock you up, so you want to iframe this one. If you don't, you'll get airborne. It's a ripple attack, so closest, mid range, and then furthest. So that was the backwards attack I was talking about, and then the jump. So these are all the things that you have to worry about if you're not tanking. These pillars are similar to the last boss, only one of these patterns will hit the dead center, but it can occur multiple times, but I still think the center is the safest. Lightning buff, sons of Oz, and then he will do these harmless AoEs, you can just, well not these. So these AoEs you can just ignore completely, it, it really doesn't matter. You can just heal right through it, just by attacking. And as I said earlier, if you do mechanics correctly, you can just ignore his final ball slams too. So these slams, you can you can just ignore them. They don't do damage at all. Unless you fail mechs. So, uh, that's the first boss. Second boss. 
I will explain this in a tank perspective because it's it's just that simple. So if you're tanking, you can ignore the first couple of swipes. So those swipes you can just ignore and then he will do two slams. Now he will slam twice, the first one with one hand and then the second one will always be his other hand. Um, the save zone will always be the opposite of the first hand or you can also think of it as the back of his second slam. So you'll always do left right or right left. If he slams with his left hand the save zone will be on the right. You can see here. Now this is the save zone. Make sure you sidestep all the way if you're attacking the boss from behind. That's why I think it's easier if you actually just stand with the tank, because then you can just sidestep a tiny bit and be in the safe zone. But that's the back of his second slam. So if he slams with his right hand first, you want to go to the left. If he slams with his left hand first, you want to go to the right. After that, he will do these harmless swipes again. You can just ignore those. And then he will do this attack. This attack will hit the tank, but if you stand right behind him, it will not hit you. At, right after this, you will do a triangular attack uh, right about here. So you want to um, iframe the triangular attack without using your backdash or any gap closers. Because right after this attack, you will do a punishment. But as a range class, you can stand right in this corner. This corner right here. Not right here, but like right here. And that will be the safe zone right there. As you can see, the pizza was here, and then the triangular attack was here. So if you stand here as a range, you're safe. But as a tank, you can just resist both of them. So if you're tanking as a BD or a destroyer, you can just spin for both of these attacks. And there, there's the punishment. It will always be outside and then inside. And that's why I said save your backdash, because it's right after that attack. And that's why if you just did, will actually airborne you. So if you're tanking, make sure you block it or QRE it. Armless swipes, and there's the beginning of his attack. He will do a double slam if you then push his mech face. So these slams, if he's slamming with both of his hands, it will only be three slams as you just saw. I'll play it again. If he's slamming with one hand, it will be four, and the fourth one will CC you. So both hands, three slams that you can just ignore completely. If he's slamming with one hand, it will be four. which you should see pretty soon. Pretty sure he does the four slams. Yep, right here. One, two, three, and then the fourth hit is a CC. Make sure you resist it. And that's pretty much it for his attack patterns. And there's the mech face. So, I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comments or add me on Discord and ask me there. I hope you guys learned something and have a nice day.